Hey everyone, Eric with Rockin' HTV 62, and tonight we're just doing an open Q&A. You can ask me anything, and I'll be glad to share whatever I know with you. I'm also right here in front of my computer, so if there are questions you might have about products or services or where to find stuff, we can go find them uh, as soon as we get going. So bring all your questions. Tonight's a good night for that. And we have Chris Brad Street on. There is Scott. Good, good evening, Scott. Got a few other people. I can't tell who they are yet. That's fine. Um, Nathan is watching. Welcome, Nathan. And I uh, let me see. Yeah, that was another guy I need to talk with. Anyways, <laughs> about ready to say something and remind myself. Nope, don't need to do that. So yeah, hi Nathan. Good to see you. Good to see you. And most of you know that uh, got back from a fun weekend in St. Louis. That was a big time. Hello, Alan. Good to see you. Welcome, welcome. And if you guys haven't met to, if you can get to the St. Louis Gateway Farm Toy Show, I do recommend it. It's a good time. Uh, we certainly have a fun time. Got to see Dustin there. Got to shake Dustin's hand. Hello, Dustin. Good evening, Dylan. Welcome, welcome. Um, so, like I said, tonight is a good night. If you want to ask me anything, we will get started here in a minute. So that will be okay. And uh, I can even explain the layout a little bit if you want to see anything like that. So we can do that. There's Nathan Dick. Got a visit with him briefly. Didn't get a chat with him quite as much as I wanted to. He was busy getting buildings and stuff for his layout coming up that he's working on. So welcome, Nathan. Good to see you again. And hello, Dwayne. Good to see you. So yeah, I got a nice crowd in here. And I have to admit, guys... After this exhaustive weekend, I thought, you know, I'm just, we're going to do something really simple, which is what we're doing. <laughs> so, and all I, so if there's any value in this tonight, it's going to be from you asking me questions, um, and I'll try and answer as best I can. So, we will go with that. So, uh, yeah, that's kind of where we're at. So we got 8.30 here. Uh, let's get started. This may be a short show, but it's all good. Hey everyone, it's Eric with Rockin' HTV Session 62, and tonight we're doing an open Q&A. You can ask me anything. I'm sitting here in front of my computer, so if there are links or something you need to find or want to know, I'll be more than happy to go out on the internet, flip the um, camera around so you can find out whatever it is you're 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 looking for. So. And we have Joe says hello, good to see you, Corey, good to see you too. Um, to get out of the gate, um, I posted a question out in the Rocket Nation of Secrets Lab asking guys, saying, hey, what do you want to learn? And just to kind of get us started, if you give me just a minute here, there we go, I will go out and find that question. Hey, Nick, good to see you. And it looks like, holy cow, Nathan is busy making silage trucks. Look at there. Um, I'm actually in the lab here taking a quick look. And here was the one comment. Hey, Brent, good to see you. Nice, nice. Thank you for checking in. So Josh Riley in the lab, he asked, how do I build a bumper like the silage trucks on your display? Um, what he's asking about is, um, at the Gateway Farm Toy Show, Garrett Mock and I of uh, Mock Farms, or Lazy F Farm Toys as you might know him, we teamed up, uh, at the show last year, we were on our way home, and we said, you know, we just need to make a layout with a shit ton of iron on it, just like you'd see out in southeast Colorado, uh, southwest Kansas, and down into, you know, Texas Panhandle, maybe up in Nebraska as well. Uh, but we just wanted to see something we see here. And so uh, we used all of Garrett's machinery and modified everything because he wanted all this stuff for his personal layout anyway. So he thought, well, we'd do double duty anyways. So he uh, put industrial bumpers on all of his trucks. And the ones he had on them are the ones I'm going to answer for Josh. So I'm going to flip your camera around quick. Or maybe I won't. Excuse me just a minute while I just... There we go. 
So, uh, to answer Josh's question, the bumpers that we had on the layout were, were this one right here, the Kenworth T660 Heavy Duty 3D bumper. And then there was, I don't remember if they were horizontal or, or vertical Kenworth bumpers. And as you can see, I obviously don't have one here. Hmm. Anyway, so here's Kenworth. There's a vertical over here. But those were the bumpers that were on the trucks in the layout. And basically, uh, the Kenworth bumper is nothing fancy. As you can see here, oh. we'll just flip this around for you. As you can see, it's just flat sided and it glues right to the stock bumper or you can take the stock bumper off and and glue it to the die cast pegs. You'll lose functionality of the bumper, but that's that's what we have there. Yes, and uh, Ward just made the comment that they had safety poles mounted to them, and I actually I forget who makes the safety poles for the. Um, it's not Garrett nor I. Um, perhaps if Garrett does come on tonight, we'll be able to get that information. So here is oh it's upside down. Let me flip that over for you. Whoop. This is the back side of the T660 bumper. Ah dang damn it. Anyways, it does mount up to the pins that uh that are in the die cast DCP. So you take the factory bumper off, there's a couple mushroom pieces of plastic you got to drill out, and then you may have to make these holes a little bit bigger depending on how you took the factory one off, but this is how they, they work. So they do mount up to the factory pins. Okay, and then um, while we're here, what we'll do then, let's do that, we're going to go out to shapeways.com quick and we're going to safety pull Let's see if we can find it quick okay so here's the safety pull hitches it looks like you can buy a pack of six for thirteen dollars a pack of four for nine bucks um, Here's 10 for 19, here's 8 for 17. I don't see a single. But that does get you here. And we'll just put the safety. I'm going to just put uh, a pack of four in the lab for you guys so you can see. Or, excuse me, in. Uh, There we go. Look at that. There we are in real time, huh? So there's the safety pull hitches. And then I'll go ahead and post out there all the bumpers. Whoops. Wrong one. And we'll do that there as well. Here we go. Okay. So now you have uh, those uh, bits for you. Okay. Okay, so that is um, kind of what we had there as far as the 3D products on those on the layout. Hi, Gavin. Good to see you. Uh, Dustin Montgomery says, could you glue styrene on the back to make hinges? Absolutely. Nothing wrong with that, uh, Dustin. You absolutely can. Um, you will lose functionality with all of my bumpers on everything except for 379, 389 Peterbilt, which does have holes that that the, the hood pins actually would go through. I use a piece of uh, 1 16th inch rod through the whole truck. I just drill out uh, the die cast where the pins go that hold the hood, the hood pins go. I drill clean through that and then just use a piece of 1 16th inch rod. I found that to be a load easier 
because you'll lose uh, the, the pins aren't long enough by going through the hole on the heavy duty bumper, the hood, and then into the die cast on the DCP truck. So 16th inch rod is what I'm using on that. So Alan, I hope that answers your question. There's a whole bucket load of things you can choose from. Looks like a four pack might be your smallest batch. Um, right. Okay. So uh, there's one question out of the way. Now, what else would you guys like to learn tonight um, regarding um, um, the show, the layout, if you want to ask about the layout? Um, we can go out there actually and see photos of it. I think Garrett actually got some better photos than I did in some cases because he picked up a few details. Uh, for example, in the scale house, that would have been the green box on the layout. It, it was just a, a container off of a DCP truck. And actually, uh, for big dairies and stuff out here where they're drawing in, where, where they're chopping, you know, far away from wherever there happen to be chopping uh, they'll put permanent sites out there with just little houses you can buy at Home Depot or Lowe's you know those shed house things uh, or they'll put like containers out there and then a place for whoever's running it to sit and then so they're just out there so he bought 3d printed uh, table and chairs and stuff like that and put them in the scale house as an added detail okay um, Nathan, uh, what's the best way to clean FUD parts? And as far as I'm concerned, I'm going to use uh, a dip in lacquer thinner. Um, I've heard Purple Power. I've heard a lot of different products, but uh, I've been too lazy to try Purple Power, so I just haven't done it. Not saying it doesn't work. I've seen some guys, they, they warm them up in, in something. It, it's quite a process, but they'll warm them up and, uh, and get the little coating leftover from the printing process off of them that way so uh, but lacquer thinners might go to splash dip it in a jug you know a, excuse me a Tupperware dish butter dish or something like that slosh it around a couple times set it out on a rag kind of damp off any excess lacquer thinner and just let it dry I'm painting in 15 minutes that's what I'm doing um, works 99% of the time. I did have to redo the paint on one truck three times because for some reason I wasn't cleaning it well enough or whatever was going on, the paint would stay sticky after I shot it and uh, just would not cure. And I had to just go back and clean it. That's the only one that's ever happened quite like that. But generally, lacquer like thinner just works lickety split, no troubles. Gavin says, when do you live stream? 8.30 Central on Monday nights. Occasionally, I'll start it late if I have uh, a conflict earlier in the evening, but generally I keep Monday nights open and free, unless it's kid activities, uh, usually. Or uh, if I miss my early workout, <laughs> and I have to do a late one. Uh, but generally, it's 8.30 on Monday nights. And Gavin, if there's something you don't know, I think everybody else watching knows this, um, I'm always looking for ideas on things to teach, whether it's simple or complicated. I'm glad to help. So, there you go. All right, I'm going to see what else I've missed. Uh, thank you, Zane, on the display. I tell you, that was just a total fluke. You know, we had no intention of winning. Um, we just wanted to make something that we've seen, and, and we did. <laughs> it was fun. Uh, Dustin says, I know Carson did a spread spread and triple axle bottle setback, but did he do a tandem setback? Oh, man, that's a good question. Shoot, we should just go out to Carson's store and take a look. Here we go. All right, so we are going to do spread axle um tandem let's see if that brings us up lpg lifted spread axle by c bar farm toys so 
So I think, actually, Dustin, you're looking for something else. You're wanting a closed tandem versus a, a spread axle, I believe. And that looks like it's a spread axle. Let's see if he's got a photo down here of it together. Nope. Well, let's just go to C Bar Farm Toys and take a look. And we got trailer parts. Let's take a look in here. All right. Okay, so he's got the spread axle, triaxle, quad. Um, Super B, lifted spread, lifted try. Um, I'm not seeing a lifted tandem, or excuse me, a setback tandem. So there you go, Dustin. Don't see a lifted tandem. Uh, Ward says, Nathan, I use nail polish remover. He is referring to Frosted Ultra Detail 3D printed parts. Uh, same question I answered earlier. Uh, Ward likes to use nail polish remover. There is nothing wrong with that. Acetone will work very, very well. And then we have another question coming out of the lab. It says, oh, looks like somebody's taking care of that fella. Well, we won't worry about it then. Okay. Um, right. So we're just going to go over here quick. And I had a question about what layout. This is the layout that... Uh, That I was referring to, and I forget who asked that just a second ago. This is what Garrett and I took to uh, St. Louis. Basically, it's a silage display that you would see out here in Southwest Kansas. And to be quite honest, <clears throat> this is basic. This is exactly what you'd see. I told Garrett, and we both agreed that the only thing that doesn't make sense on this layout is all the matching trucks. If you look at any videos on YouTube of silage harvest kind of out in the Texas panhandle and um, in my area and then in his area none of the trucks match um, I do know Friesen no who was it somebody was there's one outfit they had like six matching IH trucks so um, but most of the time I don't see him have matching trucks So all the boxes are his design, Garrett's design at Lazy F Farm Toys. Um, okay, um, we got do have a question, and and Jason says, um, I wanted to know, wanted to ask. Now having competed at a show, what would you have done different? Kind of fishing for tips because I may do a display someday in Sad St. Louis. Oh my gosh, what would I do different? Um, well, I think the big thing that we would have done different, that we would do different, Jason, is we would have started earlier. <laughs> so, um, as of December 1st, Garrett had went ahead and got the foam boards glued to the subframe, to the plywood front subframe, um, and it was um, kind of shaped, you know, with some ruts and, you know, low spots and this and that. Um, and that was it. There wasn't. Uh, there was no dirt. There was no, no nothing. I mean, it, it was undone. So uh, it was started sooner. We just kind of we just drug our feet. So that would be the big thing. Um, there were some other little details um, that we could have put on, but yeah, I didn't think of them. He didn't. I mean, we should have had service pickups, service trucks, pickups and some other things around that we didn't have around. Um, but honestly, on some of those places, there might be one pickup, and that would be it. 
because these guys, especially if you got three or four cutters on a quarter of ground, you're going to knock that out in a day. So they'll have their, uh, I know Bradstreet's um, outfit, they'll have their pickups and stuff parked at another location. Uh, kind of like their home base, and they just take the choppers to and from the home base to service them at night, fuel them up, and all that other stuff. So uh, we could have had all that stuff, but we didn't. Um, gosh, I'm trying to think. I wish If Garrett comes in, I'll, I'll ask him to uh, to elaborate on what he would do different. I know he'd agree on starting sooner, so we'll see how that goes. Uh, we're kind of got an idea for next year. Okay. Um, I, and, you know, the big thing is, is, you know, we've seen some guys will criticize displays because they have just a ton of iron around, but it really doesn't make sense for the size of the operation, okay? So if you take a small town and small farm in Iowa, you know, would they really have 10 tractors around? I mean, not saying they won't, but sometimes they do, along with all other support equipment, and they don't make sense uh, to me. I mean, it looks cool, but it's just like, hey, is that real life or not? Who knows? But, I mean, it's a layout, so who cares, really? But anyways, what we wanted to do is uh, have just a crap ton of iron on the display, but but have it make sense, like I said. It just, that's that's what it is. I mean, you that <laughs> that's exactly what it is. So I, I don't know if that answers your question, Jason, but uh, starting sooner for us would be, and then there was some fine detail we missed. Um some fine detail that we could have added, but obviously didn't make any difference, so. Okay, um, Zane asks, Eric, have you ever made the combine cranes that mount on the feeder house of combines to load headers? No, I haven't, not yet. Um, I've always daydreamed about that. Um, I mean, you could scratch make one pretty easy. Uh, I mean, I figured that's the way I'd do it because that's not one of those things a guy would ever sell, and I don't know that I want to pay a 3D artist to produce five um so if i ever made one i'd just hand make it i think that you'd need a uh gosh when they use they use those when the 9600s were on the road like the 9 96xx series john deere 2180 2188 up to maybe the 25s um and then you go back from there and you saw those little boom cranes on the front of feeder houses pretty common but that's when they were using tandems and they don't do that really anymore. Harvesters don't anyway. Gavin asks, do you make YouTube videos? Yeah, go to Rockin' HTV, Gavin, and that's where, that's my YouTube channel is rockinhtv.com. And that's my YouTube channel. You can, uh, gosh, I think there's well over 100 tutorials and stuff hanging out over there. Enjoy. And click on the advertisers. Um... Alice says, you gave me an idea to make smaller displays. Well, well done. Glad we are, we could inspire you. <laughs> I do have to give uh, Mock Farms, uh, Lazy App Farm Toys credit. Um, he did a lion's share of the work because he kind of came up with the way the display would kind of be laid out. I'm sure I wouldn't have, excuse me, come up with anything that clever. Excuse me, gosh. So, um, just... Uh, big props to him because he did a lot of work that I didn't do. So I he made two trips to Dodge City. We cut up tractors and he cut them up and I'd strip them down, get the paint off, buff them out, get them ready for primer and everything and other parts. Um, all the trucks and tractors had brand new decals. Every tractor, every chopper, and all the trucks had decal, either replacement brand new decals or door logos and hood numbers and stuff like that. I did all those. Um, and then we assembled the heck out of stuff all day Friday in St. Louis and then part of Saturday morning before we went down and, and actually put the layout together. Um, Nathan says, uh, the displays with every implement having a tractor on them drives me nuts. I mean, it's cool if that is uh, what a guy wants to do. I'm not going to hold it against him, but that's not what I kind of like myself. Jason says, I thought it made sense. It was a great, well, thank you very much. Uh, that was, it was, came again to tell you how fun it was. I was really disappointed we had to take it down because I just enjoyed looking at it. It just made me smile. It's like, man, that just kicks so much butt because that is exactly what we see out here. 
I mean, that's just what it is. And I just, it was cool. It made me happy. Gavin says, I'm going to go sub right now. Okay. And there's Carson. Carson, um, if you're listening or still on, um, I had a question for a tandem axle setback uh, kit in Shapeways. If you don't have one, um, there might be somebody that wants to buy one. There you go. So, and we went out and sh trolled your Shapeway store so we could see if it was there or not. But anyway, there we go. <laughs> okay, guys, we are coming up on 854. If you have any parting shots on um, Ask Me Anything, now is your chance because I'm going to start winding this up. Um, I will take you back out to the layout quick as we kind of finish this up. And um, If you have a question or two about this, be glad to answer them. Um, this is Woodland Scenics. I forget what flavor it is, but it's just Woodland Scenics grass. Um, Matt is asking me, how long did it take to plant all the corn on the display? I planted 1,500, 1500 corn stalks by myself in about three and a half hours. And then um, we planted another, what was it, 2,000 or more uh, Friday night in about two and a half hours. But there was four of us working on it. Um... Broken toothpicks, toothpicks for stock stumps. Yeah, that's exactly what it was, Ward. Um, there's about 5,000 of them out there. Uh, I roped my daughters into helping me out. Garrett's wife helped out. A hired uh, helper out at their farm helped out. Uh, Maddie's her name. So Kayla, Maddie, Allison, Kara um, all helped. I did it, and Garrett did it too. So... And basically, we just took regular old toothpicks and broke them into four pieces and then took an awl and made a little pilot hole and then stuck them in. So, and that, it, it, it's not that bad. And I used a plier to, to, to punch them into the foam to save my fingers. It really wasn't that bad. I mean, it took a while, but my daughters and I, we did, is this, yeah, this is the one. We did... All of this, all of these stocks over here, and part of these stocks down here, um, in one movie and a half. So we watched uh, some animated film they wanted to watch and one more. And that's what, and we did all of these stocks over here on this layout and this one. And then when we showed up, we planted all this corn and all that corn. Okay, same thing. Oh, and then we had to put stocks in all of this. I think Maddie and Kayla did all this out in Colorado. Oops, sorry about whoop, dog on it. <laughs> uh, Alan says it's odd to see bright shiny tractors in the field with no dust on them. Yep. That is exactly right, but that's uh, that's just what we had. Although I did manage to get a little silage on the hood of that truck. That was by that was on purpose. No, that was by accident. Okay, so that is uh, we got a little conversation going on too. Well done. All right, guys. Hey, it is close enough to 9 o'clock. I'm going to wrap it up and go spend some more time with my family since I ignored them for four days. <laughs> and I uh, got back last night and ended up having to go into my office to fix a computer issue. But anyways, uh, uh, thanks for tuning in. Thanks for asking questions, making this a uh, bit of a haphazard show come together. Appreciate that. And hopefully you got some value out of it. And one other thing, let me see. Next week, I believe I'm going to start a... IHS series, um, IHS series grain truck build along thing because uh, I got a guy who wants two of them, so I'm going to do that. And it's a good way to add some value to an otherwise really cheap model. And I mean, you're going to put this together for nothing if you follow along. 
because I bought two trucks in St. Louis for six four dollars each, and then um, I'm going to use my hoist the frame and end gate. And then the rest of it's going to be styrene on the bed. So this will be worth your while if you want to make your own grain beds. So get that. So that's what's going to start next Monday. Gavin asks, how did you do the silage coming out of the chopper? <laughs> Garrett says, hey, Eric, we got to figure out how to do. This is the morning. This is an hour before we have to be finished. He goes, Eric, we need to figure out how to get silage. Figure that out, would you? And I'm like, we want to do that, really? So I had a styrene rod. I had a 1.3 millimeter styrene rod, and I cut. I took two pieces of that 1.3 millimeter, glued them together with my fancy glue, and then I took my fancy glue and on the outside went all the way around it, and then I rolled it in that woodland scenic um, grass that we used for silage, and then if. There was a spot that didn't coat very well. I went back, glued that spot where it was white. Then I put it back in that woodland scenic grass until it was covered. And then I cut it to the length that it was supposed to be. And then basically, and I'll show you real quick before we stop. So this, so that's all it is, is two pieces of styrene glued together with glue all over the outside and then rolled in this silage in the back. Uh, and I used long pieces, so I had excess, and then I cut them down. So I wedged one part up here in the snout, and that's all it is. All this is is just the, the weight of this snout, or spout, against this styrene. And then this actually comes clear down into here, so it wouldn't move. So I just stuck it clear down into there, and then put the other end up there, and then it just stayed. And it didn't break. None of them fell. It was unbelievable. But that's what I did on every one of them that you'll see in here. So that one over here, same thing. Yeah, and then that shot again. I wonder if I can get one. Yeah, and then this one over here and then one way over there too. That's all it is. Unbelievable it worked. I couldn't believe it. But when you're under pressure, you do crazy things. Okay, guys, that's it. Thanks for watching. If you have any more questions, leave them in the comments. I will see you next week when we begin an S-Series IH tandem axle grain truck build, and I will catch you later. Bye.